This is brightness and glare testing for V551. Glare is the presence of one or more areas in the field of vision that can are sufficiently bright to cause discomfort in a patient and in their vision. It's a visual perception from an external light source. This source can be centrally or peripherally located. Typically, true glare reduces the quality of the image and thereby impact, impedes the patient's lives. Here we have two examples on the right of different glare situations. The most common one being this one on the top, a patient's driving at night and glare from car headlights. This is often times encountered with cataracts. Conversely, we have a picture of an indoor event where there's glare due to extra surfaces, in this case, induced by actual oil in the lens. But in reality, it can occur in real patients with real cataracts as well as other ocular opacities. There's typically discomfort involving glare, and this occurs when the illumination in part of the field is much greater than what the retina is currently adapted to. It's most noticeable when the ratio between the highest level of illumination in the visual field to the background exceeds a ratio of three to one. That's oftentimes why it's most noticeable at night, where then in a black dark field at night, the oncoming car headlights are much higher light levels, oftentimes again above this three to one ratio, and the glare can be very discomforting and distracting for the patient and impact vision. Glare in some conditions can affect performance and cause situational visual disability. Some common ocular causes are corneal scars, cataracts, any damage to the cornea, as well as diseases like keratoconus and dystrophy such as that. The most common type though we see and most common complaint about glare and effects in daily life from glare is due to cataracts. There are a number of different glare testing devices out there. There's the Optitech 1500 glare tester, there's the brightness acuity tester, and if you're old enough, you might have seen a Miller Nadler glare tester. Typically though, nowadays, the most common one performed in most offices is brightness acuity testing or BAT testing. Brightness acuity testing or BAT testing, which you can see here on the right as the patient's performing it, has a couple of different features to it. The first BAT setting is really just like we talked about to determine the effects of glare due to cataracts and other media opacities, whether this is visually disabling a patient to do the things they need to do in their life. This device can also be used for macular photostress testing. In this case, it's a full hemisphere light source to photostress and bleach the, the retina to, to determine whether maculopathy is suspected or not. This is the patient's inside view of that same vet. There are three kind of main features to the, this inside spot. First of all, there's a light source or a glare source that is uniformly projected onto the actual background. This background is a Gansfield bowl, and that way it provides universal stimulus to the entire visual field at equal photo, di photo distances across that field. Finally, there's an actual viewing window inside where the patient can view a visual acuity chart to see how much it affects their vision. How you perform a, a BAT testing through glare testing have the patient view an acuity chart through the bat, typically in our case set to high illumination. The eye not being tested should be occluded. This is all done in a dark black room. VA is then taken to determine the, the amount of decrease in visual acuity compared to the initial visual acuity. VA decrease below a functional threshold, typically 2040, is considered to be a problem for a patient and may affect their daily life. Some other guide points for actual doing glare testing with the bat. The patient be test, should be tested wearing his or her own best correction. Older patients should be given several seconds longer to adapt to the bat light before recording the best visual acuity. Do not ever touch the matte surface in the Gansfield bowl or the reflector side of the bat, as oil from the skin will match the finish, ruin the matte or the fish finish. Finally, do not perform this test through a refractor or through a foropter as the actual occluded, uh, peripheral stimulus will be occluded from there and therefore reduce effectiveness and accuracy of the test. In actuality, bat testing has three different luminance settings. There's high luminance, which is the equivalent to the patient of being in direct overhead sunlight and standing on a white concrete sidewalk or sandy beach. Conversely, at medium settings, it's more equivalent to being in that same situation though on a cloudy day. And finally, the low setting is more like being in a fluorescent indoor environment, such as a department store, a plant assembly, or a classroom. 
in most cases, because we're dealing with cataract patients in older situations, we leave them at high settings. These other lower settings though can be used if patients have complaints of glare in more indoor environments. Now there's a couple different test results that can come from that. The first and most common is there's no change in acuity. The patient in this case sees the exact same with or without the bath. This is an indication that no significant ocular opacities or distortions are present that are causing glare for this patient. The next most common is a reduction in acuity. This is commonly encountered and implies that there's opacities such as cataracts or distortions in the ocular media that are present. Finally, in very rare situations, improvement of acuity can occur. And this is due to pinhole effects from the light causing pupillary constriction. It implies that there potentially is residual refractive error or some opacities or regularities that are in the more peripheral part that are being blocked out with a small pupil. Here's an example of a common situation where we would use a bat. The patient comes in with cataracts. They don't know that at this point. We don't know that at this point. They're 65 year old patients and they have a complaint with blurry vision worse at night, but they see 2020 in both eyes fully corrected. This would suggest they do not need cataract surgery. However, when we do bat testing, when we have it on high illumination, their visual acuity now drops to 2050 in both eyes. Again, traditional BA would suggest this patient does not need cataract surgery as they're seeing quite well. However, when we perform bat acuity, their acuity drops to 2050. This is typically below the legal levels to driving in many states, as well as it's cutting off the threshold for actual reading newspapers and books. This patient may have a real impact on their daily life and actually need a cataract surgery. As we said, there's other uses for the bat. This other use is for photo stress testing. And that's typically done with the occluder actually in place where we're blocking out that central hole to actually allow a stimulus to leach out the macula as well. If we remember from our general anatomy and physiology of the retina, typical most eyes recover from bleaching within four to five to 10 seconds. We can see that on this curve here where a, a bleaching stimulus was given. And then after appropriate bleaching time, the patient bleaching stimulus is removed and we see how long it takes for their acuity to return to normal levels. And that's exactly what photo stress testing is doing. In this case though, we are looking for the recovery time from the bleach to normal or reasonably normal acuity. How that's performed is we record the patient's acuity with best correction in place without the bat. We then close that central 12 millimeter aperture by inserting the occluder in the aperture. We photo stress the eye with the bat for at least 10 seconds by having the patient look into the center of the bat on high settings. Again, they're looking at that high centered occluder, that high central center setting is the occluder they're looking at. We then remove the bat and record the length of time for visual acuity to recover within two lines of their initial visual acuity. Zero to 30 seconds is considered normal recovery time. 30 to 60 seconds, it's considered to be marginally pro prolonged recovery. Anything over 60 seconds suggests the presence of maculopathy, though it's not always definitive. The end.